I'm a big believer in the philosophy of everything in its place and a place for everything, particularly when it comes to tool storage. I want to store things like my track saw, or my drills, my router in an easy to access place, but also easy to put it back. I don't think for a lot of these tools, the shapes and heights of them are particularly conducive to putting them in drawers. You lose a lot of space at the back, or you put a couple of tools together and it becomes a real mess, particularly with cables. I want to put a cupboard up on the wall and this will basically be a pigeonhole style thing with some removable dividers so that if I change tools or if I decide certain orientations work better, I can remove or add in different dividers. These pillars are the reason the other cabinets are out from the wall further. So the cupboard I'm building in this video is going to have to be fairly deep just to sort of counteract that. But I don't want the cabinet to actually be all that deep because then the tools are going to get to the back, they're going to get lost visually. Uh, so I'm going to put a false back in it. Behind that false back, I'm going to hide a French cleat and that's how I'm going to mount it to the wall. So I've skipped a few of the steps. I've already cut my pieces to length. They were part of my initial cutting. It's just a box and I've already put the edge banding on it. You can see that I've started routing some of the panels. The bottom and top piece will get a through dado or groove for this false back. Behind this false back is where we're going to put that cleat. The sides will go on like so and it'll be screwed together like that. So that's why these pieces don't have through grooves. So there's a lot going on uh, and let's sort of work through it before we get cutting. I'm using this Bosch router, I've done a review on it in the past. I'm only using this rather than a smaller trim router because the dust collection on this is better than others. So if you, all you've got is a small little trim router, that'll work great for this task. This is my preference because I've got, I'm using a quarter inch spiral upcut bit. It's a fancy bit, it's a little bit expensive, but it leaves a really nice cut. Again, a cheaper bit will work fine too. A two flute quarter inch bit should only set you back about $20. We've got the top piece or the bottom piece, it doesn't really matter, they're identical laying down. And I've got it between two scraps clamped on my workbench. Because this is gonna be a through groove, the router will tend to wobble a bit when it doesn't have any support on the edges of the fence. By adding the scraps, which are the exact same thickness because they're melamine, it gives it that little bit of extra support. So these are sacrificial pieces. Might be a little bit hard to see on camera, but I've drawn the line that I'm gonna cut out. It is 100 mil in, or it starts 100 mil in from the edge of the back, and it is a six mil wide groove. So the quarter inch cutter is gonna cut a little bit larger than that. It's gonna be 6.35 millimeters, and I've got six millimeter MDF that I'm gonna have as my false back. So that works out just fine. You can see the spiral bit here, and I've got a depth stop set to about three millimeter cut. We don't need particularly deep. It's not a load bearing back as such. And three millimeters is fine. I'm gonna do it in two passes. One just to break the surface of the melamine, and then the second pass to actually do the cut. The actual spacing for these grooves doesn't really matter. I've gone for 12 centimeters because this is a 1.2 meter long cabinet, so it divides nicely, but the spacing actually doesn't matter so long as it's the same on the top and the bottom piece. The easiest way to do that would have been before I cut it into two, but uh, we'll go for the next easiest method, which is routing both of them at the same time. So the easiest way to do that, since this is too long for the fence to handle, is to put a new fence on. The next thing I did with the power off was measure the edge of the cutter to the edge of the space on the router. For me, that works out at 70 millimeters. I've then positioned my fence 70 millimeters away from the lines that I've got, got it up with a speed square, clamped everything down, now I'm ready to route. I then switched to putting in the pocket holes. I was very glad I made the extension wings for the Craig jig because with panels this tall, they really wanted to wobble around on me. 
A smarter option may have been to pocket hole the sides, but they'd be much more visible than the top and bottom. For the French clit I didn't have any long enough material to do it in a single piece, so I ended up using some scrap plywood to make two clits. I wanted to reinforce the cleats that went inside the cabinet, more so I could reinforce the connection to the melamine than anything. To do so I took another piece of plywood, screwed it into place, removed the screws so I could add glue, then re-screwed it. This just slips around less. I repeated that trick when actually mounting the cleats to the cabinet so I could add in melamine glue. Once I had the cabinet hung on the wall, I cut the curves out in the dividers so it was easier to grab the tools. The jigsaw struggled at first because of the way I had it mounted which caused vibration. When I stuck it directly on two sawhorses, it was much faster. I smoothed out the cuts using my spindle sander, entirely optional. So I'm pretty happy with how this turned out. The dividers didn't need to have as much of a curve as that, but I got a little bit carried away. I probably didn't need to come out as far as I did. Uh, this being 500, I probably could have got away with 400. But worst case, I can always take a circular saw around and cut off 100 millimeters and re-edge uh, band it. Other than that, it's a fairly typical sort of wall hanging cabinet. Uh, the French cleat I've got attached to the wall with some anchor screws. I didn't film that because you probably don't want to be staring at my backside while I drill into brick for 10 minutes at a time. Lots of different ways to anchor stuff to brick. I went with anchor screws because I had them. Other methods include Dynabolts, uh, chemical fasteners, uh, spaghetti, uh, green wall plugs, that sort of stuff. Uh, but as I said, this is what I had on hand and it is secure enough. So the general idea with the drills is they've now got a place to go so that I can pack it up, get things off the benches, make everything a lot tidier so I'm not running into things all the time. But I don't even have to take the bits out. Uh, that driver bit's probably the longest one I've got and that fits in just fine. If you want to support what I've been doing, don't forget to like, share, comment, subscribe, those sort of things. Uh, and if you want to support it with money, there is Patreon. Or if you don't want to spend any extra money on me, but you shop on Amazon, there's affiliate links below for the stuff that I use in my workshop. And that affiliate link stuff doesn't cost you any extra because some um, credit to me. Thanks for watching.